Hey guys, Chris here, back for round two of this video because I had a perfectly good video done of what I'm going to do here today, but I realized I had a little crumb on my mouth the whole video after. So, um, what I'm going to be reviewing today is my new Invicta Pro Diver watch. Now, um, you know, I, I love, I love watches. Um, I've had my little Elgin one for a long time, for more than two a almost three years at this point. I got it in February of 2019. Um, and I'm sure I've told you the story of how I got it. You know, I was in speech team my senior year of high school. And, um, you know, the coach, if, if you made it to a certain level and if you were a senior, he gave you a watch. And this was the one he gave me. He thought of me when getting this watch, which I think is awesome. But the thing about this is it's such a prized possession for me that I just... I, there was a point over the summer where I realized I was like, wait a second, I just can't, I can't be wearing this every single place I go because I'm gonna, it's, it's gonna get busted up at some point if I keep doing that. So, so what I did, um, mainly for work was I bought this little, uh, little Casio A168, um, which is a great little watch, you know, it's, it's digital, it's, um, you know, it's perfectly adjustable. You have this awesome adjustable band on it where you can get it to like any little micro adjustment that you can. So there's no excuse on this thing for not having it be a good fit, but um, but it's just kind of boring. It's it's good, it was $20, but it's, it's, you know, and it's reliable, it's a great watch, but it's just, it's kind of boring. So I wanted something besides the Elgin that I have right here and besides this, just something a little fancier, not, not, you know, super fancy or whatever, but I did my research. I, I was researching watches for like about a week instead of doing homework. And I found really the best brand, um, kind of for the money is Invicta. And I've heard about Invicta before. Like I've heard people talk about it and I looked on their website a few months ago and it was just like, what the hell? They're all kind of cheap. But, um, the reason they're um, cheap is just because they're they're not they're not necessarily a luxury brand, but they're not a bad brand either. I think a lot of people a lot of people hate on Invicta just because they're not really, I guess, as consistent with their stuff as other brands like Seiko or Citizen. You know, kind of similar brands in that price point, kind of. Um, but I got one of their most popular models, which which is the Invicta Pro Diver, and it comes in this nice yellow box. Really nice, actually, looking box. I was surprised how nice this box looked. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's spent a week and a half in FedEx Transit, so I'm actually surprised it came up this nice. I mean, of course, there was you know other other box around it. They wouldn't ship it like this. But taking a look, you have this. You know, this is the first thing I saw in there. This is all sized up already. I've been wearing this watch for a couple days, but um, really beautiful watch, beautiful automatic watch. And um, by automatic, if you don't know what that is, is see how this one goes. Uh, if I can get it to focus here, which maybe I won't be able to, but I don't know. It goes tick, 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 tick. See, it's going tick, 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 tick. And instead of tick, tick. Tick, that's, that's, uh, this is an automatic watch, and this is a quartz watch, and it goes tick, tick, tick. That's because this one is powered by a battery. This one is literally powered just by itself. The thing that powers it is just the swinging, and uh, you can wind it too. Um, and you can actually see the, they have a nice exposed movement back here. Movement made actually by Seiko, believe it or not. It's the uh, NH35A movement, 24 joule movement. Um, they have their own rotor over it though, so it doesn't say anything about Invicta besides the NH35A. Um, and let me see, anything else relating to Seiko? Um, Japanese movement, it says, assembled in Malaysia. So there you go, it's the Seiko movement. Um, but you, you get actually for 80, I paid with tax, it was like 80 bucks for this. You get a lot. And normally with Invicta Pro Diver, the standard model of this is about $45, but it's a quartz movement. So 
And I'm kind of getting sick of courts, to be honest with you. It's kind of boring, and really, I'm not a fan of having to change out... I mean, the battery's the least of the concerns about courts. It's just... I mean, I know how to change out batteries and all, but it's just... It's just kind of boring, and it's loud. Quartz is a little bit louder. With this, I really have to put it up to my ear to hear it go tick, 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 tick. It's awesome. Um, and I'm going to be completely honest. After I bought this thing, I mean, I did my research carefully, but the one thing I didn't really take into consideration was the, the uh, width or the thickness of this watch. And it's a thick watch. It is about 15 millimeters thick, whereas this is only about 12 now, I was concerned about that because I, you probably know, I don't really have the biggest wrist. So I didn't want this to look goofy on me. Luckily, the width of it is pretty short. It's only 40 millimeters. This is like 42. Um, but when I got this thing, it actually fit surprisingly well. And it, even though this is thicker and, um, and wider, this, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This watch is thicker. Um, this one is actually less thick, but it actually feels thicker just because I think it's a little bit wider and it just, it's got that side presence, you know what I mean? Whereas this, this kind of swoops, sort of, it kind of swoops and it kind of helps that this part just kind of pushes below. It's not, it doesn't really protrude up, but, um, but you do get a lot here. You get a rotating bezel here so you can time whatever you want to time. So I can kind of show you how it works. It just rotates, you know, to what you want it to rotate to. It's got a lot, it's really grippy. I thought it would be, because I watched a lot of reviews for this watch, and they all said that it was just loose feeling, but this does not feel loose to me. Maybe, maybe over time it'll feel loose, but I mean, as of right now, as of owning this watch for a few days, it doesn't really feel as loose as I expected it to be. Oh, fuck me. I wound it like one too many to the left, and it's only one direction that you can wind this or um kind of rotate this bezel around whatever though um but it, it you know it does have loom which is basically you know you see all the little hour hand or the uh, little hour markers i mean they're just little dots but they glow and they have a decent amount of it like they can it can last a while. I mean, you won't really see it on the, the uh, hour markers. You'll more see it on the hands. But um, still, a hell of a lot better than this thing. And I love I love this little thing. I'm never getting rid of it. It was, it was I think, the watch that actually got me into watches in the first place. But, um, but this just doesn't really stack up spec-wise. And you think that this would be able to rotate, but it doesn't. And like I said, it's quartz. And the, the, the second hand doesn't really move up or it doesn't really line up with the, um, with what it point, with the second markers. There we go. Um, but it's, it's not bad. I, I, I sound like I'm bashing it, but I love this thing, but this is just a little bit more, uh, specked out, I guess. Um, basically, um, this is based off the Rolex Submariner, which, um, that's like the dive watch. It's the dive watch against which all other dive watches are compared to. And of course, it was the first one to kind of take up this design as far as I know. So this is heavily based on it. It's got really almost everything in terms of design that the Submariner has, except for a few things. Like even this, you know, this Mercedes, I can't get it to focus. But it's like you can see the hour hand is kind of, it's got that Mercedes thing going on. Same thing with the Submariner. And they both are the same proportions, basically. Well, they're both 40 millimeters. They're not both 15. I want to say this. I'm not even going to lie and pretend like I know what the dimensions on the Submariner are. I know it's 40 millimeters wide, but I don't know the thickness of it. But, um... But this, this is a good little watch, and you get a good fit on it. You know, I was a, I had to take off five of these links because, again, just tiny wrist. But it really helps that there's this micro-adjuster thing, and you get more than, like, a band's worth of adjustment here. So really no excuse for not having it be a good fit. Um, so, yeah, I mean, even on my wrist, even on my really tiny wrist, it looks decent. Um, 
and you get a pretty cool clasp. I mean, a lot of people don't like it. I personally do. So not only do you have the one, you know, where it clicks down, you got the Invicta logo right there, but you have this little safety lock too. It's pretty cool. Now, why do people not like Invicta? Because I was telling you in the beginning of the video, it's like, oh, it's hit or miss. You know, people either love it or hate it. Invicta is one of those brands where they started, they were originally a Swiss company. So they, they had reputation as a Swiss watchmaker, you know, that's like a big piece of reputation. And um, eventually though, they kind of, they kind of sputtered out. They sputtered out once and then they sputtered out again, I think. And then they were bought by an American company, which probably kind of, kind of put some of their reliability down the toilet. Um, and with Invictus, you have to do a little bit of upfront maintenance. I had to put some uh, diving grease below the crown and in the uh, O-ring area of the seal area, kind of, if you take off the back of it, I had to do that. I don't, I didn't have, I didn't have to, but it just increases the life of the O-ring. But there was this kind of grinding noise when you would pull this thing out and in and like wind it or whatever. So I just put some grease around, diving grease around there. That's what I was, that's what I heard you should be doing. Um, so there's a little bit of upfront maintenance you have to do, but once you get past that, it's really not all that bad. And I guess the other thing that people don't like about Invicta is they're not necessarily the most original company. Like most of their, most of their watch designs are kind of based around Rolexes, which I mean, no problem with me on that, but making it, you know, not look like I'm wearing a Rolex, but you know, if it's based on that, it's a good design. I mean, I'm, that's the reason why so many companies base their watches on Rolexes. It's because they have good design. So, I mean, and they're kind of, I mean, everyone's heard of Rolex, whether you're into watches or not, you've, you've heard of Rolex and you know, you know, they're a good, they make some of the most sought after watches. Um, but so yeah, this is kind of based off of it. Um, so you, you get those almost a little bit more compact dimensions like this. It's, it's perfectly fine on me. I mean, this fits a little bigger on me just cause it is bigger, but it's not thicker, which is kind of weird but um this one definitely feels thicker but this one actually feels a little bit thinner on me so which is good um what else was i going to say about this um the one thing i'm kind of not a fan of though is is the um the little magnifying glass right here and i know that's a rolex design thing like they if you look on Rolex's website, there's two versions of their Submariner. There's the regular Submariner and there's the Submariner with the date. And the one with the date has that little, little, it's called a Cyclops. Um, and I know that's just one of their design cues, but I, I mean, it's not like it's a tiny little window. Like I could read it without the magnifying glass and this doesn't have one. And I think one of the things that this watch does a little bit better than this one is have a little bit better of like a contrast. Like this is black on black, but this is like black on dark gray and it doesn't have a magnifying thing over the date, which I like. So there's things I really like about this watch and there's things I like about this watch, but there's things I don't like about both of them too. Like I wish this thing was waterproof and it's not waterproof in the slightest because last summer maybe, or maybe the summer before, I don't know, I was literally washing my hands and some water got onto this thing. It kind of splashed onto it. And like, there was, there was literally just like trapped water in there for like a month. So this thing is not waterproof in the slightest. This thing is very waterproof. You could literally go diving with this thing if you wanted to, and it would still not get water in it. So, but it's some of the designs kind of, you know, not iffy, but you know, like the, the little Cyclops thing and the, um, I kind of wish on this one too, that the, um, uh, the things that mark the hour, the little circles and triangles and rectangles were a little bit bigger on this one. They're a little bigger and I like that, but, um, that's why I'm actually thinking about getting an Orient Ray, which is kind of style wise, like a love child between these two. Like, it's got the bigger hour markers, but it's got, it's more black on black like this and kind of more in this style, but it has, 
it's like a better version of this basically and um but with this you get what you pay for which is about 75 bucks you get a good movement you get good a pretty solid name i mean it's better than the fake aliexpress chinese brands like l'oreal pagani design or whatever there's no reputation in those brands there's no history to them they're just cash grabs kind of but um with this you have a name that's been around for a while you know people and it'll get you credit it'll get you hate <laughs> whatever but that shouldn't be your goal you know it should be buying something that you think or that you like you know that, that fits your style kind of i love dive watches i love the style probably thanks to this thing originally i'm you know, because this is sort of what influenced my style originally with, or the, the watches that I liked, you know, probably came, had a lot to do with this, just because it was the first one that was given to me. It wasn't my first watch. My parents did get me a watch around eighth grade, but I never really used it that often. Um, but this was the first one that I wore pretty much on the daily for a couple of years. Um, and now I have this thing too for like work, just because I don't want to smash up this thing and this thing, but I have been wearing this thing to work the past couple days just because, you know, it's my new watch. I want to show people my new watch, you know? Um, but that just about wraps it up. I'm, you know, if I do get more watches, which I'm, you know, I might do in the future, I'll of course do a review on them. School's been kicking my ass though lately. So that's just why the review schedule hasn't really been as consistent as it sometimes is. But you know, there's going to be breaks. There's going to be Christmas break in a couple months, so expect more videos eventually. Um, but I'll, I'll try to, you know, I'll try to post some. But either way, though, I'll see you guys in the next one.